Welcome back, kids. I'm so delighted that you are joining us today. That's right, Chin Face. Mm -hmm. It's Mr. Chin Credible. Oh, that's right. Sorry about that, Mr. Chin Credible. So, you know, all the great superheroes have some pretty cool powers. What's your superpower? I have the uncanny ability to look anyone in the eyes and make them laugh. Really? That's an odd power. I only use my powers to defeat evil, but I can show you just a little bit if you'd like. Sure. Wow, your mental capacities are just too powerful. How are you able to withstand my superpower? <laughs> um, I don't know. Ha! See, it worked. I told you I could make anyone laugh. Okay, okay, you win. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Mr. Chincredible, will you count us down? Three, two, one. Father God, we thank you again for another time that you have allowed us to come together to worship you and to learn more about you, God. We thank you so much for the opportunity that you have given us to worship you, and we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, Amen. Spirit, the Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Psalms 34 18. Yeah, yeah.
Hey everybody and welcome to another week of the Fab Five. During the Fab Five, we're looking at five fabulous prophets from the Old Testament. A prophet was someone that could see into the future. God would show the prophets what was going to happen and then the prophets would tell the people what God had showed them. Today, we're gonna to talk about a prophet named Jeremiah. Now, God sent Jeremiah to the two southern tribes, the nation of Judah. But like a lot of prophets, Jeremiah didn't have a whole lot of luck turning the people back to God. Talking to the people of Judah was kind of like, well, kind of like this. Hey, can I have a high five? How are you doing today? Um, maybe he like didn't hear me. Maybe I'll try again. I said, how are you doing? I don't think he can hear me very well. Maybe I'll try a little bit louder. I said, how are you doing? How rude. Have I ever mentioned that you have great posture? You stand nice and tall. Let me guess, is your favorite movie Wall-E? Get it? Wall-E? Nothing. I can't believe this. For Jeremiah, talking to the people of Judah was like talking to that wall. Nobody listened to him. Nobody did what he said. And because of that, Judah suffered the consequences big time. Are you ready to see what happened in our true story? Awesome, let's get started. It's time for our big Bible story, but we're gonna tell this one just like we have the past two weeks. I've got a comic here that I wanna show you guys. Notice how there are sections in each panel that are missing. You're gonna help us fill that in by drawing your own comic. So I want you to print this one out by going to the Oakwood Kids website and printing that off or grabbing your own blank piece of paper and making the boxes yourselves. Here we go. All right, you have everything you need? In panel one, I want you to draw a king. All around the borders of Israel and Judah, powerful nations are rising up and looking for new lands to conquer. Because of their sin, the nation of Israel has already been conquered by their enemy, and now the evil Babylonians are looking to conquer God's people in the nation of Judah. There's only one thing stopping them, the king of Judah has agreed to remain loyal to evil Babylon and pay them money in exchange for peace. But the king of Judah is getting tired of paying, and now he's talking with other nations about going to war with the powerful Babylonians. God has other plans, though. He sends a prophet named Jeremiah to confront the king of Judah. When Jeremiah shows up, he's wearing a large yoke on his neck. A yoke is a wooden beam that farmers put on the necks of their oxen to control the powerful animals. Jeremiah tells the king, God has given you over to Babylon because of your wickedness. Babylon has put its yoke of power on your neck, and now they control you like a wild beast. If you accept the yoke and serve Babylon, you will live. If you don't serve Babylon, you will die. Any prophet who tells you different is a liar. Now, on panel two, I want you to draw a broken yoke. There's another prophet in the room though, a false prophet named Hananiah. He grabs the yoke from Jeremiah's neck and smashes it on the ground. Hananiah shouts, no, this is what the Lord says. I will break the yoke of Babylon and you will be free of their control. But God didn't really say that. And he's not too happy with Hananiah. So he gives Jeremiah one more prophecy to share with the audience. The Babylonian yoke is made of iron and not so easily broken. I have given them control over the wild animals, and I will give them control over you too. And as for Hananiah, because of your lies, you will die this very year. Unfortunately, Jeremiah is alone in his warning, and no one will listen to him. Even when Hananiah dies two months later, the king of Judah doesn't want to believe Jeremiah's prophecy, so he continues to conspire with Egypt to wage war with the Babylonians. When the enemy king of Babylon hears about the conspiracy, he's quick to attack Jerusalem, just like Jeremiah had prophesied. 
The only things that keep the Babylonian army from a swift victory are the giant walls surrounding Jerusalem. Now, in panel 3, draw Jeremiah sitting in the mud. While the walls hold the Babylonian army at bay, the soldiers of Judah search for Jeremiah. Even though it's the sin of the people that has caused this calamity, the people of Judah call Jeremiah a traitor and blame him for all of the bad things that are happening. When the soldiers find Jeremiah, they grab him and throw him in the dried up well and leave him there to starve. Alone and in the dark, Jeremiah sits hungry in the gooey, stinky mud, wondering if he'll ever live to see the light again. But God hasn't forgotten about Jeremiah, and he moves the king of Judah to show him mercy. The king has Jeremiah taken out of the well and placed under house arrest, where he remains guarded until one day. After two and a half years of fighting, the great wall of Jerusalem comes crashing down and the Babylonian soldiers rush in. The fighting men of Judah are no match for the fierce Babylonian army. Soon, the city is set on fire and the remaining wall is broken down. Now, in panel four, I want you to draw fire on the city and the broken down walls. The enemy soldiers steal all of the gold, silver, and valuables from the temple and the palace buildings. Worst of all, the people of Judah are made prisoners and forced to leave their home. Everyone but the poorest people are taken to Babylon where they become servants to the powerful enemy nation. But God does not allow harm to come to Jeremiah. Jeremiah's reputation has reached all the way to the king of Babylon. The enemy king has heard about his faithfulness to God and about his efforts to keep Judah from rebelling. So the king gives orders that Jeremiah be kept safe. Jeremiah is invited by the powerful king to live with wealth and honor in Babylon. But instead, Jeremiah chooses to stay in Jerusalem to help the few poor people who still remain. Although his life had been spared, Jeremiah finds little happiness in it. He weeps for the destruction of his beloved nation and its people. He cries out to God. The city once so full of people is now deserted. Because of Judah's great sin, her enemy is now her master. This is why I weep and my eyes overflow with tears. There is no one to comfort me. Whoa, what a huge bummer. Jeremiah tried to warn the nation for 40 years without any success. It was like talking to that wall. Can you imagine how frustrating that could have been? Actually, it was more than frustrating, it was sad. That's why Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. He had so many things to cry about. In fact, Jeremiah wrote an entire book of the Bible called Lamentations. The word Lamentations comes from the word lament which means to weep or cry. Let's see if we can come up with all of the reasons that Jeremiah had to lament. He was discouraged. No matter how hard he tried, nobody would listen to Jeremiah. He was lonely. Everyone had turned their back on him and deserted him. He was in trouble. The soldiers falsely arrested him and threw him into an empty well. Worst of all, he was devastated. The nation he loved had been destroyed, and the people had been taken away. Jeremiah must have felt like he was being crushed with sadness. Whenever things like that happen to us, it's easy to feel like we're being crushed with sadness. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You know, you and I, we can be like this can sometimes. When sad things happen to us, well, we can be empty inside, and there's no more joy inside of us. And Sometimes, the sad things in our life can be like my foot. And when the sad, th sad things put themselves on us, the sadness can sit and be heavy on us and keep us feeling kind of down. And when sad things just keep on happening and happening and happening, it feels like our heart breaks and crushes under the sad things in our life. But the Bible says it doesn't have to be this way. Let's look at our Bible verse and read it together. And it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 34, 18. 
When we feel overwhelmed by sadness, God is close to us. God is kind of like this jar. This jar is clear, which reminds us that God is invisible. We can't see him, but he's always there. And this jar is also strong, and it reminds us of God's infinite power and strength. And so, when sad things happen to us in our life, when we have God, it kind of looks like this. When we feel like life's sadness is pressing down on us, God is close. And when sad things just keep on happening, God saves us from being crushed. Look at this can. Nothing's happening to it because the jar, God is protecting it. When Jeremiah felt sad, God was right there with him. He kept Jeremiah from being crushed by the sadness. And he gave Jeremiah hope that the sadness would one day go away. And do you know what? God does the same for us. It's okay to feel sad. Just know that you are not alone and that God will save you from being crushed by the sadness. Know that you can pray to God and ask Him to help you find your joy again. And best of all, know that for those of us who follow Jesus, God has promised that one day we will live with Him forever in heaven where there will be no more tears and no more sadness. Let's put our arms out wide and pray. Three, two, one. Father God, we thank you so much for the story of Jeremiah. Even though that this story isn't a happy one, it's a sad one, God, we know that you are with us even when we are sad, just like you were with Jeremiah. And so God, when we feel crushed under the sadness of life, may we remember that you are here to protect us and that you are here to save us. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your great name that we pray, amen. Didn't Pastor Patrick do an excellent job teaching the lesson, kids? Remember, kids, God is close to people with a broken heart, so we can find comfort in Him when we are sad. Well, it's time for our discussion questions. Question one, what does this story teach you about God? Question two, how would you have felt if you were Jeremiah and why? Until next time, kids, remember to trust in God no matter what, no matter what, trust in God.